Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahillezî lebessel izze vel kibriyâ. Aktarahum âli nefsehî dûne halqih. Nahmeduhu şükran le en'âmih. Ve nesta'inuhu alâ vazâifi hukukih. Thumma salatu ve selâm alâ seyyidina ve نبينا وحبيب قلوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Lord of here and the hereafter and we thank him glorify his position and we also convey our greeting and salutation to the Holy Prophet of Islam and his pure progenies. Sisters and brothers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ibadullah, awsikum wa iyayi wa taqwa Allah. Qala aliyun alayhi salatu wa salam, kam min sa'imin laysa min siyamihi illa al-ju'ah wa dhama' وكم من قائم من ليس له من قيامه إلا السهر والعناء حبذا نوم الأكياس وأفطر وإفطار. Many people who fast they don't benefit or get no benefit from it, just hunger and thirst. And many who pray. They do no better than wake up and hardship. The sleep and eating of the select, the God conscious, are far better and most favored. We begin with a Reminder to the brothers and sisters a few things. Number one, please turn off your cell phone. We repeat this every week and only to find out some people have not done so. So please turn off your cell phone and refrain from conversation during the khutbah. This is the last Jum'ah of Shahar Sha'ban, a holy day. And as we approach the month of fasting, a holy month coming in. So I would like to take this opportunity and congratulate everyone for making it by grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to fast this incoming year huge number of our friends that were here last year during the month of Ramadan, unfortunately, they are not around. May God bless their souls, but yes, this is a reality. Nobody knows whether we can make it to the next Ramadan. So this is a privilege that we really make, should make the most of it. Unfortunately, COVID-19 is back and uh, this morning's those of you who listen to the governor particularly Dr. Khaldun the medical advisor he focused which is unusual from him he categorized various groups that now at risk number one unfortunately is 10 to 19 they have seen over 30% increase in getting these, this particular group getting COVID-19. Why? Because they don't take it seriously. Few days, few, uh, last week or beginning of this week as I was driving along Warren Street and I passed a famous uh, barbecue shop, packed. Nobody's wearing masks. Nobody's taking care of anything. 
The seats are literally next to each other. And then we complain why the spike? So according to him, 10 to 19 is the one which is most endangered now. Then goes to 20, 29 and so on. Please take care. From a religious point of view, each one of you has an obligation. If by neglecting your responsibility, you're putting the life of others in danger, you, have, you will be questioned. Vaccination, another issue. The Islamic Center and the, there are a number of other centers that are, the governor is insisting that we should provide they should provide vaccination to as many people as possible. So, so long as they are available, please take the opportunity and go and get. Second chapter of the Holy Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs the readers and the believers that fast has become an obligation not only for the Muslim community, as it was obligated for the previous communities before Islam. And then it proceeds uh, to state that the objective of fast is uh, gaining taqwa and God-centeredness or God-consciousness. Now, there is a debate uh, as exactly what is taqwa. I don't want to discuss it at the moment. But from a religious point of view, you can refer to your, the fatawa of your own scholars. During this month, those of you who are baligh, aqil, not sick, etc., etc., you are obligated to fast from dawn to, uh, to sundown. According to the fatwa that has been given, you refrain from food, drink, etc., etc. But all of these are what we call the outward concept or obligation of fatwa, the, the, uh, the fasting, the outward. Creates a discipline uh, and in, impo imposes on us some kind of piety, etc., etc helping us to break free from the shackle of the material life that we have got used to. And as a consequence, we have drifted away from the source of sacredness and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second goal of the fast, which is to change our universe from a universe that we centered it on our ego, a nafs al-ammara to bring something which is much larger and put as a center of the universe, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the month of Ramadan and the fasting of the month of Ramadan is a period of reorientation. You change from a material direction into God, godly direction. But if we are not aware of how to do it, because the verse in the Holy Quran certainly does not give the whole prescription as how to go about to obtain that taqwa. We have to read and we have to gain it from somewhere else. If we don't know exactly how to go about the fasting and what should we do, ultimately we fall into the trap of what we think as the quantitative work, which is one of the misconceptions. I'm sure all of you have seen it. During the month of Ramadan, there are individuals that they wait, wait, wait. They don't do anything during the beginning of the month, and they want to pack everything on the 23rd, 21st, or 19th, thinking that this is going to substitute and, and uh, make them the most ideal candidate for on the night of the 23rd to be forgiven and their destiny to be changed. Islam doesn't want, this issue of month of Ramadan is not a quantitative issue, it's a qualitative issue. If you do very little, but that little affects the soul, penet penetrates the heart, then you have achieved something. Let's be honest, let's reflect on the last year, last year Ramadan. 
Did we come out of Ramadan in exactly the same position that we went in? Or we, there was a subs, substantive or at least concrete change? Let's be honest with ourselves. If we went into the Ramadan and came out of it in exactly the same position, that strategy must be changed. Otherwise, we tend to go through the same thing all over again. That's why reflection. Imam, there is a hadith both from Imam al-Askari and Imam Rida uh, that says, لَيْسَتِ الْعِبَادَةِ بِكَثْرَةِ الصَّلَاةِ وَالصِّيَامِ It's not the quantitative issue. إِنَّمَا الْعِبَادَةِ أَتَّفَكُّرُ فِي اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلَ To sit down and reflect. And Amir al-Mu'mineen sallallahu alayhi wa encapsulates the whole thing. Min ayn, ila ayn, wa fi ayn. Where did we come from? Where we are going? And what is our responsibility now? In this moment, at this moment. If we don't think, we tend, we run the risk of going through the month of Ramadan, repeating the same thing, thinking that dua, iftitah, or putting Quran on our head is the only thing that we have to do. We lie, we cheat, we backbite, we slander, the, the, the whole gamut. That's not the fasting of Ramadan. And if you look at the khutbah Sha'baniya uh, that the Holy Prophet, by the way, Amir al is one of the source of that khutbah Sha'baniya. That uh, it echoes the hadith from Amir al echoes the same kind of theme that the Holy Prophet uh, talks about. The door has been opened. You go on to Google or Wikipedia, Ayatollah Google or anything else, and type in Khutbah Sha'bani, and the whole list comes out. And read it. And see what the Holy Prophet tells you. The door to heaven is open, the door to, to hell is closed, shaitan is chained, etc., etc. No makum fiha ibadah. And then at the end, fa'inna shaqi. The most wretched individual is the one that, despite all the, the advantages given to you, you still miss the opportunity. The month of Ramadan is a month of transformation. So you go in and you come out different person, even little bit. If you can eliminate one bad habit, if you are habitual, if we are habitual, say liar or backbiter, control it. You have done something. If you gain one good habit, then you have achieved something. But if you go in in exactly the same condition and you come out of it, nothing, no, no, the wise, none the wiser, then must be something wrong with the strategy for the month of Ramadan. Don't think that because we, are, we pray and because we fast, then we have something. If it is not done properly, the, way, the, the verse in the Holy Quran, فَوَيْلٌ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ you pray. Yet Quran says, Why? Because during the prayer, you are not present. Allahu Akbar. Your mind starts wandering around. From one business to another. From one house to another. From one job to another. From one class to another. From one paper to another. My professor, God bless his soul, Ayatollah Mutahari, told us a story one day. He said, I went to Iraq. The most famous Arif of Iraq was Marhum Qadi. I'm glad that Abu Sa'id sent me a picture of his grave when he went there. 
He had a famous student in Karbala, said Hashem Haddad, was well known. He said, since I didn't, my, when I got there, Marhum Qadi had already passed away, so I went to see Sid Hashim Haddad. And he asked me, he said, Shaykhuna, uh, do you pray? He said, yes. Do you pay attention to your prayer? Yes, Sayyidna. How do you pray? I focus on my Allahu Akbar, on, on Alhamd, Surah, and everything else. Once I listed the whole thing, he said, then when do you pray? This is the outward of the prayer. The true prayer is Mi'raj al Mu'min when it elevates you. If you focus constantly on Hamd and Surah, you miss the point. Fasting, not eating, not drinking, this is the outward, the inner condition that we really need. Cleansing of the soul. Getting rid of the bad habit, acquiring good habit, etc., etc. These are the critical issues. When we go back to the hadith of the Amir al Mu'minin, that said, you become God-centered, even your breathing and your iftar and your sleep becomes ibadah. Why? Because now you organize your life, you reorient your life, and you center on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قُلْ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَالنُّسُكِ وَمَحْيَاءِ وَمَمَاتِ وَحَيَاتِ And everything else? Lillahi Rabbil Alameen. When we look at this hadith, he points out that it is possible for us to do the prayer and not be there. Present yet absent. To do the fasting and not benefit beyond the superficial outward. When we come out during the night of the Qadr, and we hear people outside using foul language against each other. You just finish the Laylat al Qadr. It hasn't sunk in. Then the third one is only those who center their life and turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and become God conscious is the one that really can fast properly. We don't have many days left, unfortunately, for the fast before the month of Ramadan starts. We really need to get organized and have a plan. I remember last year, I looked at it from a management point of view and how to organize our life. Briefly, I'm going to touch about a few things. If you don't have a plan, Amir al-Mu'mineen, salatullah salam alayhi, you're going to, on the night of the 20, 21st, Allah, Allah, fi nadm amrikum. Organize yourself. Have a plan for your life. For the Ramadan, we should have a plan. They, the, the old maxim says that failing to plan is planning to fail. From now, for those of you who left the fasting until the last minute, you start either the day before or even Shah Ramadan. Organize your daily routine. What, how are you going to adopt the routine during this month and how you're going to handle your commitments how to help the needy and share with the others if you read khutbah the shabaniya the, um, the holy prophet points about this even small amount of contribution to the needy and the poor and and, and the destitute for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is has a reward the citation of the Holy Quran and reflection on it. Not competition, how many verses and how many chapters I finished. If you do one chapter, the whole month of Ramadan. But if the moment you open the Quran and you say, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, your heart begins to open up. You have achieved something. 
But if you go through 10 recitation of the complete Quran, but your mind is not there. So have a proper structure organized for the recitation of Quran. Have a measurable goal that you can measure on a daily basis. If I'm going to do it today, the 10 ayah from the Holy Quran and reflect on it, keep measuring on everything else. Most important of all, eliminate the vice and gain the virtue. Even one at a time. A habitual liar, a habitual deceitful individual, you really need to break your day on a small bit by bit basis. I'm going to control my tongue and not to say anything for one hour. And then move forward. Stay away from backbiting, from the environment that pushes you towards these kind of sinfulness. May Allah assist us all to fast the holy month of Ramadan in the way the holy month of Ramadan deserves us to fast that way, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim al-Asr. Inna l-insana la fi khusr. إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله يا رب العالمين نحمده حمد الشاكرين ونشكره شكر الحامدين الحمد لله على كل نعمة علمناها وعلى كل نعمة جهلناها ثم الصلاة والسلام على حبيب إله العالمين الذي أرسله الحق بشيرا ونذيرا سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله الطاهرين وصحبه المنتجبين أخواتي وإخواني الأعزاء السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته عباد الله أوصيكم وإياي بتقوى الله عن علي عليه الصلاة والسلام إنه قال خاطب الرسول الأكرم صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في آخر شعبان المسلمين خطبة رائعة في جدول وبرنامج عملي لشهر رمضان المبارك تحدث فيها صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عن شهر رمضان ليحيئ المسلمين لاستقبال شهر الله العظيم الذي لا يقاربه شهر شهر من الشهور وليتم استثماره بالشكل الصحيح والكيفية التي أرادها الله تبارك وتعالى ومما جاء في هذه الخطبة أيها الناس إنه قد أقبل عليكم شهر الله بالبركة والرحمة والمغفرة شهر هو عند الله أفضل الشهور وأيامه أفضل الأيام وساعاته أفضل الساعات هو شهر دعيتم إلى ضيافة الله وجعلتم فيه من أهل كرامة الله أنفاسكم فيه تسبيح ونومكم فيه عبادة وعملكم فيه مقبول ودعاؤكم فيه مستجاب وهذه آخر جمعة من شهر شعبان في هذا السنة لأننا سوف نستقبل شهر رمضان إن شاء الله بإذن الله تعالى يوم الثلاثاء أو الأربعاء القادم وقد أراد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم للأمة أن تتعرف قيمته ودوره وحركيته في صنع الإنسان القريب إلى الله تعالى والقريب إلى الناس 
والمنفتح على المسؤولية في نفسه وفي علاقته بالآخرين يقول علي عليه الصلاة والسلام عندما بلغ رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم آخر الخطبة قمت وقلت يا رسول الله ما أفضل الأعمال في هذا الشهر قال صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أبا الحسن أفضل الأعمال في هذا الشهر الورع عن محارم الله ما معنى الورع؟ أن تتورع عن كل حرام في هذا الشهر في قولك فلا تقول كذبا ولا تأييدا لظالم أو منحرف وأن تتورع عن الحرام في فعلك وعلاقاتك وعن الحرام في طعامك وشرابك وتجارتك وأن لا تنطلق في شهوة حرام أو في موقف أو تأييد تأييد حرام وقد ورد عن رسول الله في نفس الخطبة إن الشقي من حرم غفران الله في هذا الشهر العظيم وعندما نريد أن نستقبل شهر رمضان فإن علينا أن نستقبله بإعداد فكري وروحي وأخلاقي وتقوائي لأن الله تعالى فضل هذا الشهر على بقية الشهور وقد ورد في الحديث أن لله في كل ليلة من ليالي شهر رمضان عتقاء من النار وأن الله قد أفاض على على الناس رحمته في هذا الشهر المبارك ولذلك لا بد من أن يكون دخولنا في هذا الشهر متميزا عن دخولنا في في الشهور الأخرى لأن الاستعداد لشهر رمضان لا بد من أن يكون في داخل أنفسنا فنطرد من عقلنا كل فكر باطل وثقافة باطلة ليكون ليكون فكرنا فكر الحق والتزاماتنا الثقافية التزامات الحق ونطرد من قلوبنا كل ما لا يحبه الله من حركة من من حركة القلب فنبتعد عن الحقد عن على المؤمنين وعن المحبة للكافرين والمستكبرين أن يكون قلوبنا منفتحا في نبضاته على ما يحب الله من العاطفة وأن نطهر أجسادنا من الذنوب ونطهر عيوننا مما حرم الله النظر إليه ونطهر آذاننا مما حرم الله الاستماع عليه نطهر ألسنتنا مما حرم الله النطق به أنا هاي القصة شفتها العام الماضي بشهر رمضان ليلة واحد وعشرين شفنا بعض الأخوة طلعوا من المركز وصلوا لشارع فورد رود علوا أم كلثوم يعني أكو تضاد الآن أنت طلعت من المركز والقرآن على رأسك اللهم اغفر لنا فلان أم كلثوم يعني دقيقتين ثلاث دقائق وأن نطهر أجسادنا من الذنوب ونطهر عيوننا مما حرم الله النظر إليه ونطهر آذاننا مما حرم الله الاستماع إليه نطهر ألسنتنا مما حرم الله النطق به ونطهر أيدينا مما حرم الله أن تحمل بهما أو تستعملهما لأكلك أو شربك ونطهر بطوننا من أن يدخل فيها حرام إلى آخر بهذا يكون رمضان هذا الشهر هذا السنة شهر الطهور ومع هذه الإطلالة المباركة لشهر ضيافة الله وعنايته ليس لنا إلا أن نتوجه إلى الله تعالى بما دعا به الإمام السجاد عليه الصلاة والسلام في أول شهر رمضان المبارك اللهم أعنا على صيامه بكف الجوارح عن معاصيك واستعمالها فيه بما يرضيك حتى لا نصغي بأسماعنا إلى لغو ولا نسرع بأبصارنا إلى لهو وحتى لا نبسط أيدينا إلى محظور ولا نخطو بأقدامنا إلى محجور لازم نتذكر إن السمع والبصر والفؤاد كل أولئك كان عنه مسؤول لقد دعيتم إلى ضيافة الله في هذا الشهر وقد طلب منكم صاحب طلب منكم صاحب الضيافة أن تصوموا أغلقوا كل أبواب الدنيا وابتعدوا عن الشهوات الدنيوية لتستعدوا خير استعداد لليلة القدر المباركة 
شيء مخزي الانسان بعض الاوقات يشوف اجتني خبر من بعض الاصدقاء في الدنمارك المانيا بعض البلدان الاوروبيه المسيحيين بلشوا ينزلون الاسعار للمسلمين اللي يردون يصومون في شهر رمضان ومع الاسف الشديد المسلمين باعتبار انه شهر رمضان اسعار تصحى لتستعدوا خير الاستعداد لليله القدر المباركه فلنعظم هذا الشهر ونحافظ على حرمته ونحييه بالعباده والدعاء والاستغفار مو النار قيله ورا الصلاه والافطار الى ساعه ست خمسه ونص بالليل نحاول والتقرب إلى الله تعالى بفعل الخيرات وبالعطف على المساكين والفقراء وإشاعة الأخوة والمحبة وتناسي الأحقاد والخصومات علينا أن نعد أنفسنا إعداداً تحت رعاية الله وفي خطه وسنة رسوله وفي منهج الأئمة من أهل البيت عليهم السلام نسأل الله أن يوافقنا وإياكم أن نحافظ على حرمة هذا الشهر المبارك إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد أفضل ما صليت على أحد من خلقك وصل على أمير المؤمنين سيد الوصيين علي بن أبي طالب وصل على فاطمة الزهراء سيدة النساء العالمين وصل على سبطي الرحمة وإمامي الهدى الحسن والحسين سيدي الشباب أهل الجنة وصل على أئمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من عوانه وأنصاره والمستشهدين بين يديه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته